Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is the final lecture for the course on academic writing. So if you recall, in the previous lecture, we started looking at the final stage of writing that is editing and proofreading. We looked at punctuation, spelling and capitalization. We started looking at errors related to articles and uh, continuing that discussion today we will look at some more you know rules related to uh, the use of definite article the and then um, we will also have an overview of the entire course so uh, in the previous class we looked at when we use indefinite article and some occasions where we use the definite article the. Now there are some um, context where we do not use any article. So let us look at them. So first one is you are using a noun to refer to an institution concept not a particular building. So look at the example. My sister goes to school. Helena's mother went to prison. He does not go to church. So in all these uh, examples, you have these nouns, school, prison and church. Here these refer to a social institution, not a particular building. So when you say my sister goes to school, it means, you know, she is young. So, she does not go to college or she does not sit at home, she goes to school. So, that is what you mean. Helena's mother went to prison. Here, you mean to say, you know, she was jailed in the past, maybe because of some crime or maybe, you know, some other uh, issues uh, or she was wrongly framed, maybe, but she went to prison. That is what you want to focus on. Similarly here, he does not go to church. Here you are talking about this person's religious beliefs. Um, uh, saying that, you know, this person does not probably believe in God, so does not go to church. So that is what you are uh, here um, referring to. If you were, say, referring to uh, any particular um, building, then you would use article the. So if you say, my sister goes to the school, then you mean you know one particular school maybe the school which is nearby um, uh, the school which is the most prestigious in that area so something like that so here we do not mean that so here we do not use any article second rule is when you are using a particular noun in a generic sense then we do not use any article. Look at the examples. Peacock is our national bird. Engineering is the most preferred choice now. Child is the father of man. So here you can see in the first example, I am using peacock in a generic sense. I am not referring to one single peacock or a specific peacock I have in mind. So, it is not the case either. So, here peacock refers to you know the entire class of peacocks. So, it is in a generic sense. So, there is no article. Similarly, here engineering there is no article. Child here in a generic sense. So, there is no article. Similarly, you use an uncountable noun with no article if the you know we mean all of it or any of that particular thing. For example, look at this, I need help 
I don't like cheese, do you like music? So when you say I need help, you know, any kind of help, some kind of help you need or, or, or all possible kinds of help you need. So, uh, so you don't here yeah, specify uh, anything. I don't like cheese. So there are different kinds of cheese. So probably you don't like any of those cheese. So you know, here there's again no article. Similarly, do you like music? So do you listen to music? So I'm here referring to a person's hobby. It may be some form of music, all form of music. So um, that's why there's no article here. You can also use plural nouns without articles in the same sense. For example, I don't like dogs. So maybe you like cats. So in a this is a sort of you know a generic sense. You don't like any dogs. That is the meaning here. I don't need questions. Give me answers. So here again, uh, you don't like any kind of questions. You need answers. So it's in a generic sense. Now, let us look at these three examples and see what is the difference. Research is an important activity in universities. So here there is no article in first example. Second, the research begun by Dr. Matthews was continued by Professor Brankovich. Here you have the article the, so here there is no article, so NA, I am marking it as NA. Now look at C, a survey was conducted among 200 patients in the clinic. So here there is indefinite article. Uh, so um, why this difference? So as you can see in sentence A, research, this is usually uncountable. So it is being used in generic sense and therefore there is no article. In sentence B, I am here referring to one specific research activity. Here the one which begun by a person here Dr. Matthews. So this is not uh, uh, research in generic sense or this is not research you know. One, put, one instance of research I am here referring to the specific research. So therefore you have the definite article the. In C, the survey is not specified and it is being mentioned for the first time and therefore we have the indefinite article R. Note survey is a countable noun, so it can take an indefinite article. Now let us look at these examples and then decide why article D is used or not used. A. The most famous fictional detective is Sherlock Holmes. So here article the is used. So why? It is you know the superlative degree. So with superlative degree we use a definite article the. The USA was founded in the 18th century. So with periods we use the time periods. So you remember the middle ages. So that is what we say. So the 18th century and this is name of a country but it takes article the. So note there are few exceptions usually proper um, nouns do not take any article but um, USA takes the maybe because it is seen as a conglomeration of several states. So therefore here we have article the. Look at see, the government changed its attitude in the 1980s. So the 1980s, this is time period, so article the, I am here using article the government. So this is you know a social institution, so therefore you know um, maybe I am referring to one specific government here, so I, I have used article. In many companies, the knowledge of most of most employees is a wasted resource. So here the is used, knowledge of most employees. So I am here 
referring to something specific. So, this is not knowledge in general. So, therefore, uh, article the is used. Here it is indefinite article in the sense of one. So, it is one of those resources which is wasted. So, this was about articles. So, note here that uh, article usage is fairly complex. So, with you know in a lot of practice you will be able to master when to use it and when not to use it. So, now moving on um, we look at revision and finalizing. So, you have um, actually taken care of all the errors and before you submit you need to look at it again and you know uh, revise some parts here and there and finalize it. So, when you are revising you can ask yourself the following questions. So, does this fully answer the question or questions in the title? So, you have a write up. So, you ask yourself. So, you have a task. So, is your write up you know appropriate? So, have you left out something or is there something which is unwanted? So, you need to ask that question to yourself. Do the different sections of the paper have the right weight? That is, is it well balanced? So, say you are looking at 3, 4 um, issues related to one particular topic. So, um, you need to make sure that you have actually you know um, treated them equally. So, say you are talking about causes of poverty in India and you have listed uh, 3 causes. So, you think all of them are equally important. Then ideally you should have devoted equal amount of space to each of those you know, causes. But say you have spent one page on one cause, but then again just two sentences on the remaining then it is unbalanced. So, you have to keep that in mind. Also, you know there are different sections in a paper like you know we have seen structure of a research report or a research paper. So, there is introduction, then your uh, review of previous studies, then methodology, results and discussion, conclusion and so on. So, um, you have to you know assign proper weight to these sections. So, usually introduction is shorter one, then review of research is slightly longer than the introduction section. Then, uh, but the focus is on uh, you know uh, research methodology and discussion of uh, your uh, results and uh, you know uh, about the procedures of data collection and other things. And again, conclusion is a short one. So, have you um, you know assigned equal uh, you know proportionate weight to these sections? Does the argument or discussion develop clearly and logically? So, say you are writing an argumentative essay. So, have you made your position clear? So, have you provided uh, enough evidence? So, um, and you have to see if there is logical connection across paragraphs, across different sections of your write up. Have I forgotten any important points that would support the development? So, one final look. So, you look at your write up and ask if you have forgotten to include something. So, maybe you read something you thought you will include it later on, um, but uh, you forgotten. Now, is the last chance. So, look at it and see and also you know check your uh, references section. So, make sure you have uh, listed all works you have cited in the main body under references and similarly you have to make sure you have given proper in text citations. Um, also check if you have acknowledged key people you know your funding organization um, or reviewers if it is a, a journal article 
So, uh, these things you should check at this stage. Now, uh, let us look at how you can you know revise uh, your paper. Here, um, I have taken a short example. This is you know uh, an introductory uh, section um, and the uh, task was this. What would be an acceptable number of interviews to carry out for a master's dissertation? So, this was the task given to you know say this particular student and here is the introductory section of this write up. So, let us read this. An interview can be defined as a conversation with a definite structure and objective. It goes beyond an everyday discussion with no particular purpose. There are many possible interview situations, but all involve an interviewer and an interviewee. It is normal for the former to ask the latter direct questions and record the answers. The questions may be prepared in advance or they may occur as the interview develops. The recording is often done on paper, but may also be done by audio or video recording. Interviews can take place anyway in a street, cafe, office, bar, restaurant, etc. It is hard to say how many interviews can be carried out in one day. I personally think that two is the maximum because it can get very tiring. A lot depends on the subject being researched. So, this extract is the from Bailey 2011. So, as I said this is the introductory section of a longish uh, write up and topic was this. What would be an acceptable number of interviews to carry out for a master's dissertation. So, now keeping this task in mind. So, do you think this is appropriate? So, if you look at this carefully, you understand that there are some issues with that. So, what are the issues? So, some are listed here. So, one there is too much space given to basic points. Something like for example, you know um, in this all this you know definition, um, these details there is actually uh, it is actually too much. Then very important uh, no in text citations included here. So, here you see that there is no citation. So, for example, here the person has defined it, but uh, so what is the source of this? Then sentences are too short. So, recall that you know for um, an effective piece of writing you need to have variation in sentences, but here you can see that um, the questions may be prepared in advance or they may occur as the interview develops. The recording is often done on paper. So, it is hard to say how many interviews can be carried out in one day. A lot depends on the subject being researched. So, there are too many short sentences. Style is not suitable. See here, uh, I personally think. So, in academic context, we do not express you know our own uh, opinions. So, whatever you say uh, it is based on some previous work. So, it should uh, be you know inferred from it uh, you know logical uh, progression. So, there is no uh, scope for personal views and opinions here. So, you cannot uh, say something like this. Then question in title is not addressed. So, this gives details about what an interview is how it is conducted, where it is and all that. But if you look at this task again, uh, this is not about um, defining an interview, 
this is what would be an acceptable number of interviews to carry out for a master's dissertation. So, there is nowhere in this section any uh, you know uh, reference to the topic. Maybe you can start with this, but somewhere you need to come to the task as well. So, the, there are some issues with this section. So, now let us look at it the revised version. Organizing an interview involves a series of steps, Davis 2007, including recruiting interviewees, finding a suitable venue and writing appropriate guidelines. However, depending on the research subject, a more flexible approach can be adopted, resulting in a less structured interview. Cooper and Schindler 2008, for a master's dissertation, interviews must contain data relevant to the research topic, which the interviewer can later process. As King states, gathering a large volume of cases does not guarantee the credibility of a study. King 2004, 16, most writers agree that two one hour interviews per day are effectively the maximum for one interviewer given the time needed for preparation and subsequent processing. Moreover, if audio or video recording is used, there is more content to be analyzed. For instance, in terms of facial expression, the analysis of one interview can take up to three days work. In order to answer the question, clearly much depends on the research topic and the time the researcher has available. So, here you can see that uh, some of the things which you saw in the uh, previous version you can find here also. For example, you know um, different kinds of uh, um, methods of uh, data collection in an interview and then um, what is the, uh, involved in uh, interviewing a person. So, some information is there, but the way it is presented you can see is very different. So, uh, the first you find references and um, you do not find as you saw here, I personally think. So, this is clearly a big no in academic context. So, instead you find uh, in text citation. So, it means whatever the writer is saying is based on uh, you know some previous research. Then there is a quote here you can see and um, a reference to it including page number. And very importantly, this touch, touches upon the topic. So, I am going back to the topic, what would be an acceptable number of interviews? So, acceptable number of interviews, a master's dissertation. So, key words here. So, we saw here that there is no reference to uh, these things here at all. This uh, you know has spent a lot of uh, time and uh, has devoted a lot of space to introductory aspects has not come to the main topic, but here you can see that um, so for example, see here you can see here for a master's dissertation interviews must contain data relevant to the research topic which the interviewer can later process. And then here in order to answer the question, so article the, the question which is given in the task, it depends on the research topic and the time research researcher has. So, you have um, dealt with the introductory aspects like you know what is involved in interviewing and um, how you analyze the data, um, what is the maximum you can do and then you have uh, connected all those things to your topic that is how many you need for a 
a master's dissertation. So, this is how you know you uh, revise. So, you here you have all the data. Uh, so, you look at your uh, work and uh, you know bring in some tweaks and changes uh, to make it more effective. So, definitely you can see that this version is uh, more appropriate, it is uh, to the point and um, it also follows uh, well established academic conventions. So, um, we have so far you know uh, discussed um, various aspects related to editing and proofreading. So, basically we you know uh, look at um, errors in grammar, vocabulary, punctuation and um, we you know address those issues. Um, so, now uh, let us look at some you know examples of those errors and you know how we should go about those when we are proofreading. So, let us look at some examples. So, here are uh, you know uh, extracts from parts of sentences. So, with uh, different kinds of errors. So, let us look at these in detail one by one. First one, corruption is a problem in many countries such as Africa. So, you know you may have inadvertently uh, committed uh, a factual error. Uh, so, what is the error here? You are saying in many countries such as Africa. So, Africa is not a country. So, you have to change it. Word ending. So, you may have got confused because of similar sounding words or maybe autocorrect has you know changed it. So, see here she was young and innocent. You are here describing this person. So, using adjectives. So, this is young. So, this should be innocent. Then punctuation related issues. So, what is the optimum size for a research team? So, definitely this is a question. So, you need a question mark. Also here note that um, there is something called what we call indirect question. So, for example, if I say uh, I wanted to know how these people will perform on a test. So, this is an indirect question. So, such indirect questions will not take a question mark. Instead, you know we should put a full stop after those. So, you have to you know double check this aspect. Then problems related to use of tenses. Since 2005, there were three major earthquakes in the region. So, you have been talking about a time span which starts from 2005 till date. So, the, this tense is wrong. So, you have to say there have been. Then um, you have problems regarding vocabulary. Uh, look at this vital to the successfulness of a company operating in China. So, maybe because of analogy you know you have uh, overextended the use of uh, prefixes, suffix, but um, you have to make sure here uh, vital to the successfulness there is no such word it is only success. So, another um, word uh, which people uh, often use is foundation, but note there is no such word. You, you can say it is bounded. So, there is some limitation. So, there is no word as foundation. Then problems related to spelling. See here, um, previous experience can sometimes give researchers. You mean to say previous? So, while typing this can happen, so you know, we call them typos or it could also be because of autocorrect. So, you have to 
check um, particularly regarding this because um, a spell check in your word processor may not identify such you know mistakes. So, it is always you know good it is act in fact highly advisable that you know you sh should look at your uh, work uh, very carefully line by line uh, looking for such uh, spelling mistakes. Then um, issues about singular plural nouns. So, look at this example one of the largest company in Asia. So, when you have a phrase like one of then this should be plural. So, one of the largest companies in Asia. Then style. So, finally, the essay will conclude with a conclusion. So, see here finally conclude conclusion there is so much of redundancy. So, this is problem with the style. So, do not repeat words uh, with similar meaning in the same sentence. So, this is a bad style. So, maybe you can say the essay um, will conclude with a summary of something um, or will present the main findings of the study. So, you need to rephrase it. Missing word. So, an idea established by David Ricardo in 19th century. So, here article the is missing. So, we have seen that you know articles is one area which can create problems for learners. So, you have to uh, check for such omissions or you know uh, overuse of articles. Then word order. A rule of marketing which states that consumers when go out shopping. So, this is a problem when consumers go out shopping. So, maybe you are uh, you know thinking in a different way um, or the sentence structure demands a particular kind of order. So, then this kind of issues with word order come. Also, you know we have discussed the use of modifiers, you need to place them appropriately in a sentence. So, if you misplace it, sentence may be wrong or it may lead to um, ambiguous interpretation. So, order of words is very important. So, uh, these are you know kinds of different kinds of uh, errors uh, you should address uh, when you are uh, proofreading. Um, it is you know uh, a good practice if you can find someone who is not familiar with your topic, but who is good at language. So, this person can help you regarding proofreading. Um, some professional services you know are also available if you can you know afford uh, that is fine. Otherwise, you can ask a friend of yours or uh, somebody to help you with the proofreading. So, um, uh, this we, have, you know, we saw in the previous class itself. So, you have been working on this. So, you are a kind of you know uh, too much obsessed with the content um, and as a result you cannot focus on uh, such um, uh, you know uh, minute things. Nevertheless, if you know uh, such kind of errors remain in your final version that is really not good. Many journals um, reject you know papers straight away because of such um, mistakes. It is in fact considered you know as a mark of negligence. So, if you have say a spelling error or a punctuation error in your CV or a covering letter, then uh, that, that, that is again uh, is not considered a good um, habit at all. So, uh, you know people may think you are being just too negligent. So, these errors uh, you need to uh, really take care of. So, another uh, you know uh, problem with most learners is, so you have a writing task say and you have some time given. 
So, learners spend all the time only on writing and uh, as a result they do not have any time left to proofread to revise at the end. So, that is again a uh, uh, mistake. So, say if you have 30 minutes to write something. So, ideally you spend some 5 minutes on planning then about 20 minutes writing and final 5 minutes you know on proofreading and revising. So, um, this can you know bring in focus to your write up and can actually get you higher grades. So, with this you know we have come to the end of the course. So, I um, will quickly go through um, the different um, uh, things we have discussed uh, during this course. So, um, this course had mainly three parts. Um, they were uh, reading in academic context, then writing and then language elements. So, um, what all we discussed under each of these. So, um, we started with this part reading in academic context. So, some of the main um, topics covered under this are listed here. So, the first one which we looked at was how you interpret uh, the given task. So, unless you understand the task clearly, you cannot you know uh, write a good essay, you cannot you know do justice to it. So, that is the first thing. So, you look at keywords in it, you understand you know uh, what exactly you know is required and then accordingly you will plan an outline and then you search for resources. So, all other steps depend on this. Next was searching for resources and evaluating those. So, uh, it is just not enough to find resources, you should also be able to judge them and then decide whether they are trustworthy, you can use them or you should not use them. So, some may have inherent biases, some may have a faulty methodology. Um, so, all these things you need to keep in mind. Then we looked at uh, different skills related to reading. So, one was uh, reading for quick understanding or for an overall uh, understanding, um, which is also you know known as uh, skimming. Then reading for specific information, uh, which is also known as you know scanning. Then reading for detailed understanding. So, here you move beyond these two. So, you want to understand um, you know, the structure of the write up, uh, how those different parts are connected. So, what is the main thesis, how it is developed. So, what are the strategies the writer has you know adopted. So, are those effective. So, all those things we discussed. Uh, under reading for detailed understanding. Then reading for critiquing. So, um, so uh, understanding what you have is one level. Next level is you know questioning uh, the author. So, is the author you know uh, appropriate here? The examples are they appropriate? Is the style appropriate? So, uh, if the author is arguing for something. so. Uh, what is the evidence? So, can you you know believe in that? Is there clear logical progression? So, and then are there any biases? So, we discussed you know how subtly the words you choose, the structures you choose reflect your attitude towards the topic. So, uh, we look at the author's attitude, the tone, all those aspects um, I mean, you know under reading for critiquing. Um, then uh, the final topic which we discussed under reading was uh, note making and summarizing. 
So, you make notes of it, um, uh, then uh, you sum up only the main points. So, uh, first we paraphrase. So, rewrite uh, whatever author has said in your own words and then um, reflecting the uh, original organization, original attitude, we write a summary. So, those things we discussed under this thing. So, note making and summarizing. The next part was uh, writing. So, here um, we started first with structure of a basic paragraph. So, we looked at cohesion, coherence, you know topic sentence. So, how you construct a paragraph those aspects we looked at. And then next we moved on to how we move from a paragraph to a full fledged essay. So, we saw that um, structure of an essay is very similar to that of a paragraph. So, a topic sentence in a paragraph is something similar to an introductory paragraph. The rest of the you know paragraph is similar to the body of the essay. You have a concluding sentence in a paragraph sometimes, you have a concluding paragraph in an essay and then there are connections established. Um, so, there is uh, you know coherence, unity. So, um, the structures therefore, are very similar. So, we discussed all those aspects under this. And then we uh, discussed various discourse strategies, um, some you know uh, which we focused on include narration, description, process analysis, cause effect, argument, definition, classification, illustration, comparison. So, narration we saw you know how you talk about uh, incident of which happened in the past. So, it could be personal, it could be completely fictional. So, um, you know things are arranged in a chronological fashion. So, that is what we looked at uh, under narration. Uh, description, uh, we describe a place, a person, an object, a thing. So, focus is on adjectives. So, we looked at um, uh, objective description, you know which people most people are likely to agree with. Then the subjective description, your own interpretation, you have a mood to create accordingly, you choose words. So, those things we discussed under description. Um, process analysis uh, talks about a process, how you carry out. So, we saw you know uh, you can write a process analysis for people who are going to perform it. So, as we see, you know, um, we saw uh, some manuals and um, then you can also uh, write a process analysis just for information purposes as in a say an encyclopedia entry. Then we looked at cause effect, um, you know uh, organization, um, how you know you establish uh, causes for something or effects of something. We also looked at uh, uh, causal uh, errors, then argument. So, what is your uh, thesis, you know different kinds of um, uh, lines of argument. So, appealing to uh, uh, you know your emotions, um, then appealing to moral authority. So, then or uh, you know a rational appeal. Uh, so, uh, we discussed all those under argument. Then um, we looked at definition. So, how you write define something, how you write an extended definition, then classification. So, uh, you have a classification criteria. So, the categories you make should be you know very distinct, non overlapping. So, all those things we discussed under this. Then illustration, you uh, you know give examples to explain something. So, we looked at how you choose examples, how you go about you know giving details of that. Then comparison. So, you have two things. So, you can look at only similarities or uh, only differences or both depending on your purpose. So, here again you can compare only similar things, two dissimilar things cannot be compared. 
So, all those aspects we discussed in the comparison. And then um, we looked at some models of academic um, writing. Um, we looked at uh, statement of purpose. So, for internship purposes or for higher studies and then we looked at teaching statement and research statements. Uh, these are very relevant if you are applying for academic jobs and then we looked at how you prepare a research proposal um, to a funding agency or to your college, then a research report. So, you, uh, some work is done, you present a report on it or you investigate an issue and you come up with uh, solutions to that. Then we also very briefly looked at research paper, so different parts, how you go about it, you know. We also looked at um, some aspects of research methodology like you know uh, what uh, kind of studies you know you can conduct, how you go about uh, you know, uh, you know uh, collecting data, um, uh, other aspects we looked at under uh, this research paper. The final uh, part uh, was language elements. So, um, when we were discussing uh, different uh, discourse patterns, along with this uh, we covered some aspects of language. For example, narration, past tense, description, you know, uh, adjectives and adverbs, um, cause effect, linkers. So, uh, under this language elements, we looked at uh, some more aspects. So, under grammar, uh, you know, we looked at use of tenses. So, um, we saw, you know, how we use uh, different tenses, what are the common errors uh, related to tense use, uh, like tense inconsistency, choosing the right tense for your purpose. So, those aspects we covered under this. And then we also looked at subject verb agreement errors. So, this is one of the most common errors. So, we discussed some uh, ways uh, to avoid subject verb agreement errors. And then we also looked at pronoun referent agreement. Um, so, pronoun should agree with the previously occurred, um, the noun which has previously occurred. So, that agreement also, uh, you know, we have to ensure. So, those things we discussed. And then we also looked at uh, various uh, sentence strategies. So, something like, um, you know, uh, ensuring variety in sentences. So, you have simple, compound, complex. So, you bring in variety in sentences. And then uh, uh, we uh, discussed other problems like choppy sentences. Uh, run on sentences. So, um, some common errors related to um, writing sentences uh, were covered under this uh, topic. So, um, there we also discussed you know how you, uh, you know go for brevity. Um, you, you could uh, you know write um, sh simple short sentence uh, when you know um, uh, it serves the purpose instead of uh, going for a long um, complex sentence which does not make any sense. So, those aspects were covered under uh, this. Then we looked at uh, vocabulary related uh, strategies. So, uh, we saw you know how you should avoid uh, jargon, you know how you you know go for um, uh, you know clear words instead of something very general uh, uh, words, you choose something very specific. Then we saw that words come with you know different connotations, positive, negative, neutral, formal, informal, colloquial context. So, um, English is very rich in synonyms. Um, so, when you are choosing a word, you need to keep all these things in uh, mind. So, you need to choose the word carefully. So, we discussed that. Then we also you know looked at avoiding cliches, um, malapropism, 
um, then uh, when you are using a figure of speech say particularly in a description uh, you know uh, what things you need to keep in mind how you know you should avoid awkward comparisons so those aspects we discussed under um, this uh, vocabulary then um, we looked at um, the final aspect that was you know something to do with the proofreading so here we looked at um, punctuation uh, related uh, mistakes then spelling related mistakes uh, uh, errors related to capitalization um, then um, we also looked at articles um, you know because it's a common area uh, of confusion for learners so um, so when you proofread you address errors related to uh, these things so um, once you know you have uh, revised once you have proofread um, so then your uh, write up is ready for um, uh, submission um, so here you know i would like to you know uh, say a few things about you know uh, submitting it to journal and then um, will conclude this course so say you have you know um, followed all the you know necessary conventions um, and um, you have taken care of errors and then you know um, if you are planning to uh, submit it to a journal um, first you should do very careful uh, research so choose uh, the journal you know which is most appropriate for your purposes something like your field of study something you know which um, uh, you know follows um, your way of inquiry say you, you know you basically follow a qualitative research methodology but a journal publishes only those with quantitative methodology so then you should avoid and then um, another thing which you need to keep in mind is the review process so how much time that journal is going to take so if uh, a journal says you know uh, they take at least six months for review and then again um, one year two year for publication then you need to um, keep those things in mind if you are in a hurry uh, you know you then better you may avoid uh, such things so also uh, these days many online journals have come up so before you submit you have to you know ensure their credibility and um, you, if you are in doubt you can check with your teacher and then you go about it so um, that is how you know you go about submitting to a uh, journal say so if you are you know submitting it to your instructor so uh, as I you know mentioned you proofread it thoroughly you, you know submit it to your teacher and then you can ask your teacher for detailed feedback so that will help you uh, in you know improving your skills further um, you can also share with your friends and um, get their uh, comments so um, that is um, another way of improving your skills um, also there are you know many websites which offer uh, detailed comments on drafts uh, there are many resources available um, some we have you know um, referred to during the course of our lecture so you can consult those um, resources they offer very useful tips for improving your uh, writing skills so uh, finally keep in mind that uh, writing skill is very important if you are um, going to stay in academics it is even more important because um, you uh, are expected to um, you know, publish and uh, so uh, good writing skills are highly you know um, prized possessions so focus on your writing skills of course um, it you know you need to practice a lot so as I mentioned you can take the help of your friends your instructors but you keep practicing 
and uh, gradually you will be able to hone your skills. Thank you.